Hi there, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. <clears throat> Decided to do this video rather atypically, right? In a setting that is somewhat mundane, right? I'm on my morning walk run. And why? Because I feel that Valentine's Day is just like every other day, truthfully. It is. In its, in its true, real sense, right? Not in, in the superficial, societal sense of how it's viewed. In the truest sense, being about love, right? That celebration occurs every day, right? Every day is a, is a celebration of our existence as souls, as light, as love. And so, you know, if, if, if you're feeling, I don't feel the love, right? I don't, I don't feel the love. I feel like I, I need the love. I feel like I um, must search for the love. I must find the love, right? Where is the love? If, if you find yourself asking yourself that, right? Go within yourself. Connect to yourself in that space of stillness because that is the only place you will find it. The only place. True love. exists within yourself it's the unison the unity the relationship between your soul self and your human perception awareness and existence once you can merge those two uh, parallels <clears throat> and find peace there that's where you will feel the boundless love, the most true and authentic form of it that exists. And true love is that. It is boundless. It is um, abundant, right? And true love, I believe, even between two people, is just the recognition and the reflection of the love that those two people are within and of themselves, right? I don't believe that love can be given. I don't believe that love can be taken. I don't believe that love is tangible. I don't believe it's conditional, right? True love and true fulfillment and satisfaction of the soul is realizing the soul in and of itself. Acknowledging it. Acknowledging that it is love and light, that you are love and light. And that we are here to appreciate that space within each one of us. Right? And I believe that that's really what, what forms, right? a true and authentic, um, healthy, positive and empowering relationship. One that, that um, <clears throat> in which both people, right, recognize the other person's soul, soul path, right, recognizes that that person is already love. They don't need me to validate them. I don't need to validate right, them. I don't need to make them feel love. I just appreciate them. I appreciate their path. And I want to support that. And I want to encourage that. And I want to empower that. And vice versa, right? Both people. So I believe that 
if you're looking for a relationship, right? You're looking for that soulmate. You're looking for the one, quote unquote. First, connect with this one, right? With the one that you have inside, with the one that you are, with the one that you were born as, as a soul, right? And the one that you will leave as, as a soul. Everything here in life, in, 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 the, in the interim, in, in the interval, right? This chapter of life, are, are merely experiences, right? That, that enable us to achieve that soul growth. Right? So the experiences of relationships, whatever they may be, friends, anything, right? <clears throat> These are all circumstances that allow us to achieve that soul growth, right? Ultimate soul satisfaction, which again, it, it moves so far and beyond Valentine's Day, right? <laughs> you're not living for Valentine's Day, right? It's not the love of Valentine's Day where you're like, oh, I'm happy now, right? So it's really, um, <clears throat> it's, about, it's about finding <clears throat> yourself, first and foremost, finding yourself, finding your truth, connecting with that in a super solid way. And then it's about finding right or or just being open and receptive to which i believe you will be at that stage once you're solid within yourself right then you're just you're just open you're no longer searching you're just you're open you're open to see what comes right and you're accepting and you're appreciative and more importantly you can you can um you can uh recognize right what truly vibrates with you positively what truly supports your best and most authentic you what supports your truth as a soul right but you have to find that first you have to find that within yourself who am i what's my truth what's what what's authentic to me right within me within myself before anybody tries to come in and and give that to me right i want to find it for myself and i want to be i i want to i want to be the the one right who provides that unconditional love and support, that unity, that bond of the two halves of myself that make me who I am on this, on this soul journey. So I believe that, right, once you enter that space of unconditional love and fulfillment within yourself, then you, then you can be open to, to recognizing, right, those who come into your life, who are attracted to that vibration that you are emitting and want to support it and want to, and, and want to sub just simply support it, right? Not, not, validate, not validate it, right? Support it. I appreciate you. I support you. I love the love that you are. I appreciate the love that you are. And it's the people who tell you that who who truly right who truly you know are aligned with you and with your soul path right and it's those people who remind you that you already are love that it's not externalized it's the it's the irony it's the irony right so, on this day and on every day, remember that you are love. And you are light. You are harmony and vibration. And tune into that, right? Whenever you feel lack, right? Which is just another form of of, of uh, not being calibrated within yourself, right? <clears throat> so I hope that this was helpful in some way. It's a lesson I'm living through. It's a lesson I've learned. It's a lesson I've, I've experienced, right? It's not easy. It's not easy. We, at the end of the day, we are human. We are human. We have these senses. We have the human senses, right? 
but it's, it's zooming out and realizing that everything in this world is somewhat of an illusion. It's realizing that when we zoom out, right, we realize what all of this is about. All of this, why we're here. Right? And then when you realize that, when you truly grasp that, then you're going to start seeing things differently. Right? You start to recognize people that, that, that enter your life in a completely different way. Experiences that you experience. Everything then becomes a tool to grow on this journey as a soul. Right? Which is boundless, transcendental. And you can achieve boundless growth in that way, all right? So thank you again, everyone, for for tuning in. Um, This was a topic that that, um, I was compelled to to share. And I hope that um, it um, it was of love and light to you all, all right? So I'll be proceeding with your readings now and have a wonderful Valentine's Day as a celebration of the love you are and this reflective space that you share with others. Bye. Hi there, Pisces. Hope you guys are all doing well. It's Valentine's Day. Let's see what is in store for you along this journey of achieving ultimate soul satisfaction by way of the alignment of your soul and your physical existence, right? The union, the unison of these two halves of your being coming together into one, right? Appreciating that journey that you're on, that your soul has embarked upon, right? And that your body, your your physical existence has taken on. It's beautiful. And similarly, right? The appreciation of that same space housed within all of us. Right? Tapping into that. Uh, reflective space of love and compassion for others and their unique individual paths and journeys forward. There is a quietness. There's a resounding quietness, a stillness, a highly meditative sort of um, space and vibration I'm feeling, Pisces. I feel you're super tuned in and dialed in. You're very in touch, very in touch. You, it's high priestess energy all over, all over the place. Beautiful. Which is, right, not hard to come by for Pisces. Pisces is a very... Um, otherworldly, right? Very tuned into the other realms that exist beyond that, which is physical. So you're coming into your own. You've been in your own, it seems. You've been tapping into that space, that truth, that light, right? Of your soul purpose, your soul guidance as you move forward and through the month, through the past month, past months and your life in general. So I'm not surprised, right? But I'm happy to see that this energy is uh, moving forward in such a sound way. I'm really happy to see that, right? Again, and I mentioned this in the last video for Pisces, um, you know, because sometimes it is difficult. Pisces is a very energetically sensitive sign, very porous, so to speak. And So sometimes it can be difficult, right, for Pisces to tune out the energetic sort of frequencies that come at them, right, that they're receptive to. 
so it's so good. It's so good and satisfying to see Pisces as being sort of, um, 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 so, um, connected with themselves, connected with their personal frequency and vibration in such a way that is, um, at complete peace, right? And on a path forward that, um, they feel absolutely in line with. Oh God, that's great. <laughs> Beautiful. It's like this, Pisces. It's like this. You know, like in the movies, um, when, when there's a character who sees the light, right? And so they, they look off into the light and they're just completely taken, like, by what they're seeing up in the heavens, so to speak, right? And um, everything else around them, it's like as if everything and everyone tunes, tunes out, right? Is tuned out and becomes almost blurry, right? And the only thing that becomes so clear, so real, so relevant is the light whatever that is guiding them. And it's the light of your intuition I'm feeling is, is what's guiding you. The vision you have of your future is so bright and it's, it's, it's pulling you like a magnet. And you're like, you're going with it. You're flowing with it. You're following it. You're letting it pull you and you're so entranced. You're in this space of entrancement, right? with where you're going and you can almost feel it. It's mysterious. You don't know, right? Kind of like when someone sees the light in a movie, it's kind of when they're dying, right? In a way, it's the rebirth. It's a rebirth. It's a beautiful thing. So you're, you're, you're being transported into a world, right? Into another realm. And the, the pull is so strong that you're not fighting it. You're not fighting it. You're, you're in another world right now, Pisces. It's amazing. You're in, you're in the transit phase with major, major, um, um, enlightenment. I feel your, your connection with your intuition and your spiritual self is so dialed in and so strong, right? That you're almost like, um, you're almost like you're seeing everything around you as like, like this is a different dimension, right? Like this, this is a different dimension. Amazing. All right. And inherently there's mystery to it. There's mystery to it, right? Pisces, you feel like this is a big change and there's a lot to come. This is something that you feel is, uh, yeah, you know there's a lot to this journey. You know that there's a lot coming of this journey. It's something significant, right? You're not just walking from one door or through one door from one room to the next you're like changing homes you are changing neighborhood you are and i'm feeling metaphorically but take that as you will this one's different now okay and the way that this card came out i will say this was rather interesting. Okay, there was sort of an interesting energy with this card. It's the Father of Swords in reverse. It was almost like, um, I feel like this is not your energy at all, Pisces. I'm feeling this is someone else, okay? I will say that. But let's get to the rest of the spread. And the energy that I'm feeling with this Father of Swords is a little bit resistant. Okay, it's a little bit resistant and um, it's very different than the free-flowing, free-flowing 
these two cards. Let's pull these out. The free flowing. Wow. Son of Pentacles and Son of Cups together, both upright. Wow. Okay, I'm going to get to this. But very different from the free flowing energy, right, that we're speaking to. This is someone in your environment. Okay, that's what I'm feeling, Pisces. Someone in your environment. Father of Swords in reverse. There's a lot of heavy energy with this individual, perhaps. Something that doesn't flow fully, completely. They're not on the same page as you in some shape or form. They don't really see... You guys are not seeing eye to eye about something, perhaps, as it pertains to this new journey you're on. Okay. Interesting. There we go. Okay. Ace of Wands. Very, very interesting as your theme in reverse here. Overlaying the Five of Pentacles. Overlaying the Two of Wands in reverse. And the Ace of Swords in reverse. And I'm being compelled to go through them here. The Tower Upright. Okay. Nonetheless, absolutely, there is the embarking upon a new journey that, um, regards your personal sense of creativity. Absolutely, as we see it with the Son of Cups as well. Absolutely, and I'm sensing it regards your finances, your career, whatever it is that you contribute to on a daily basis, right? That brings you a sense of stability, long-term groundedness, right? So... But it's creative. It's absolutely creative. And it's something that is real to you, right? Cups, emotions. Emotions are from within us. It, it, it's, it's an internal energy, right, that is expressed. And it is expressed with the Son of Cups and absolutely with the Ace of Wands. Um, and I'm saying this is the transformation, right? Embarking on this new beginning is replacing this old sort of... Uh, uh, unsatisfying, unfruitful situation that regarded your finances or your career in some shape or form. Something that was just not doing it for you anymore, right? Okay. But we see the Ace of Wands in reverse. We also see the Two of Wands in reverse, right? Speaking to this beginning not fully taking its complete um, um, stage presence quite yet, right? You have the One and you have the Two. So... So, the ultimate transformation of this, right, the doing away with this, and the replacement with this, is reliant on the first step that you take, right? And thereby, the decision of how you want to take that first step. So you're in the planning stages, that's what I'm getting. You're in the planning stages, right, going from a one to a two of the, of the wands, and you're waiting to communicate about this in a public way, perhaps, you could be in the stages also of thinking and planning about how you're going to communicate this, how you're going to actually go about it, right? And it will require you to transform and take down um, the scaffolding of a world that does not serve you any longer, right? The tower is like a situation that um, uh, does not serve our ultimate truth, right? It's like the inevitable downfall, right? Like, it's the sort of energy of that was bound to happen, right? That was bound to come down someday, right? The foundation of that structure that was built was not built on a, on a, on a firm foundation, so to speak. But in terms of even your truth, your, your personal truth, right? It's like I engaged in something that um, ultimately, right, was going to come down someday. And this could be something that you knew, right, that you know, it's like, I knew that that wasn't right for me. I knew that that was going to sort of not fulfill me completely in terms of my career, perhaps, or was not going to be the, the wisest move in terms of career finances. Um, right? And so this is going to be required of you to make a major transformation. And maybe, right, speaking about it is going to shake things up for yourself and a lot of people, your environment, and so on.
Okay. Now, off in the corner, I have this Father of Swords in reverse. I'm sensing again, this energy is radiating as very differently than yours. Okay? Very differently. Um... <sighs> Okay, let's let's get to this. Um, look, I'm sensing this is kind of like nuisance energy. Okay, this is somebody who is a pain in the butt, that kind of thing. Okay, somebody who is very intellectual, is very well spoken, is very um, you know perhaps very um, book smart, so to speak. Right, has a way with their words, um, but is not, right, you're not seeing eye to eye. And they're almost, uh, their approach to life even perhaps, or of, you know, what you want to do and how you want to move forward, is, um, is, is not in line with your approach. Is not in line with, right, you guys are not on the same level in some way. Not level, level, like, of hierarchy, right? I really don't like that word at all, but in terms of, um, instead, right, approach, right? How does one person see something? Of perception. How does one perceive something? And everybody's different in the way they perceive things, but the Father of Swords is like, the way I perceive things is what's right. That's kind of the energy of this Father of Swords, especially when it's in reverse, right? It's kind of like the obstinacy that, um, of perspective, right? Not willing to see other viewpoints. Being so firm and so fixed, in their personal, what they see as right or wrong, right? Being air, air energy, right? Justice, right? Um, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini. Being very much like there's a right answer and there's a wrong answer. There's a right way to do something. There's a wrong way. And it's all about strategy and it's all about, um, right, calculation, right? And fact, so to speak, which is very, um, very polar, to the Pisces energy, which is more free flow, go with the flow, follow my dreams, my intuition, right? This is not really intuitive. This is like, this is the way things should be done. And so the Father of Swords is looking over what you're doing, but remember Pisces, I do not feel that you're being affected at all by this energy. It's almost like they just, they're there, right? They're there. And yeah, they think maybe you're weird for whatever it is that you want to do. Or they're like looking at you and you're like, ah, like, you know, looking off in your dreamland and your dream world, which is beautiful. And that's what's required oftentimes, right? To move us into this space of, um, of creating something that, that is otherworldly, right? That the world needs, right? of of stepping into our truth right there's no blueprint to our truth right there's no formula or algorithm to our truth so you know it's like not everybody's gonna understand that right not everybody's gonna understand that and i think you know what you're like at the point where you're like that's cool that's fine if you don't because you know what what i'm creating right is going to enlighten the world and it's going to open your mind right and i think that's really like in general that's what pisces is about it's about opening the mind right in such a way where you see beyond what is seen right you move beyond the physical hindrances or societal hindrances right that are set upon you in some shape or form right you're very creative very creative. You want to create what is not already created also in a way, right? So, and, and, and tied to that is a very compassionate energy as well. Right? You want to create something that will benefit the world, right? In some shape or form. You have this sense of connectedness to humanity, right? And so um, I'm sensing that you're so tapping into that. So tapping into that, right? That space of being so connected, so dialed in to, this is my calling and I want to, I'm feeling like save the world kind of energy, okay? I want to create something that, that is real to me, that I know by doing this, I'm, I'm, I'm making an impact that's real and that's true. And, and, um, and because of that light, right, that you're holding so fast onto, 
it's like this energy is, you're like, this is the reason why I'm doing this, right? To obliterate this, to create more of light, more of um, a space that's open-minded and compassionate, that is otherworldly, that opens our minds to another world, right? This is very fixed energy. This is very, um, right, this is, this is very compartmentalized energy. Whereas you are rising, you are creating, right? You're boundless, Pisces. Beautiful. So this is not standing in your way, but it is there. And you know what? It's good because it just proves how resilient you are in this quest of whatever it is you're, you're, you're moving after swiftly. Okay? Beautiful. Um, up top, you have the Two of Swords. Strategy. Still thinking about how to, right, how to take action, very specific action, right, the actual moves that we make, and that could be what is holding this card in pending, holding this energy in pending, of actually embarking, you want to do it right, you want to plan strategically with it, you want to make sure that every, uh, you know, or is in order, it makes sense, as it pertains to your truth, as it pertains to your creative direction, the Son of Pentacles, sorry, Son of Cups is looking right over at this Two of Swords. So it's the creative direction that's intermingling with the strategy. And that's, again, beautiful to see for Pisces, right? Beautiful. You not only are going for your dream, but you're going for it in a way that is, um, 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 to some degree, right? You're like, I want this to be, I want this to, to, to be built on fertile ground, right? And I know that um, what goes into that is, is strategy, right? Is uh, forming my fire, my inner fire, and my water energy, look, in a way that is very deliberate. Look at this, um, this sun, or what looks like a sun also looks like a moon. It looks like a new moon, right? And fire. It's like a blazing moon. The fusion between fire and water. And the Sun of Cups is looking over at this, right? Kind of like here. Here is my creative abundance, right? Strategize with it. Strategize. Strategize. Implement it. Put it. Put some structure to it in such a way where it, then I can baton it over to the Son of Pentacles, which is moving in the opposite direction, right? So it's almost like the Son of Cups is busy. Look at these two cards. They're looking away from each other. And the Son of Cups is looking over at the Two of Swords. So it's kind of like the Son of Pentacles. It's like it's like the Son of Cups is on the back of the Son of Pentacles. Son of Pentacles is like, hey, Son of Cups, um, let me know when you're like done with that, right? And so the Son of Cups is like, yeah, no problem. Gotcha. Looking over at Two of Swords, like... Hey, so let's get down to it. Let's really strategize and focus and channel this energy in a way that is very deliberate, right? And that's, I think, why you're waiting. You don't want to just take the, you don't want to just splash in, right? You want to really be deliberate with it. You want to really channel and focus this fire energy in a way that is um, well strategized, right? Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, you could have an overload of work, of options, perhaps. You could have a lot of different options, right, running through your mind. You have the five of wands. Okay, so you could be thinking, hmm, do I want to do it like this? Do I want to do it like that? I could do it like this. I could also do it like that, right? So it seems like you're working through some options, which is good. It's good to have options, right? But you're trying to achieve clarity, and I'm zeroing in on this clear quartz crystal that's right above this card, this five of um, wands. So I'm sensing you're trying to achieve clarity, and we're also saying that with this card here. Trying to achieve clarity on how to um, um, uh, wield this fire energy in exactly which way, right? There are many avenues that you could take, it seems. The Mother of Cups kind of came out with the Hermit together. The Mother of Cups is um, potentially someone... Okay, one second. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, Mother of Cups can be someone in your midst 
who very much resonates, very much resonates with this, whatever you're doing, supports you, wants, right, is like, is like adding to your, your, your enchantment, your, um, your, your optimism for this new beginning, right, is almost like guiding you through it in some shape or form. Look at this card. Right? It's very much like, um, it's also nurturing. It's, mother, it's also mothering, right? Mother of cups. So it's someone who's very in touch with their emotions, who is very emotional, but is also enchanting, right? Um, and so it's almost like, look, right? The father of swords, the hermit in the middle, and the mother of cups, it's like this. The base. The mother of cups is motioning over at the son of of pentacles and the son of cups, which I'm feeling is depicted by you in your journey. Oops, you know what? Sorry about that. It's like this. Right? So, it's almost like this. Pisces. Father of swords, in reverse, got his panties up in a jammy type of energy, off in the right corner, like... Yeah, you're there, but you're not, like, the focus of what's going on, and I'm not going to let you hinder my movement forward, right? He's externalized. Then you have the hermit in the middle in reverse. Okay, and I'll get to that. But you then have the mother of cups motioning over to the son of the cups and the son of pentacles. It's almost like the mother of pentacles is, like, here, dear, here. Focus on this. This is the beauty of the situation. Here, this is, um, um, um. Right, it's almost like it's almost like um, it's almost like you know when a kid comes home from school, and is like is like down and about about something, right? Like, well, you know, today my friends like whatever it is, right? And the mother of cups comes over and or the mother, <laughs> who is generally a mother of cups, right? Maybe, maybe, right? comes over and is like, here, dear, what's wrong? What's wrong? Right? Kind of like that. Like, shooing away, in a way, the child from whatever is sort of like a potential hindrance, so to speak. Okay? Whatever is discouraging. Pushing away, right? Pulling, pulling, embracing the, the child, right? In such a way that, um, wants to make them forget about whatever other energy is going on that's not helpful for them, right? That's not positive. And so, but this is the thing. I'm feeling that this energy is very encouraging, very supportive, but not because you need it in the sense of not because you're like, oh, well, otherwise I'm like really being affected by it and I'm, you know... No, right? Again, we spoke about that. I don't feel like you're being affected by it, but I'm just feeling that, you know what? This is somebody who is supportive, who is wanting to nurture um, your dreams, help you nurture your dreams in some shape or form. Okay, it's just somebody who, aha, uh -huh, like this. For you, you view as, you view this person as someone who is coming in the opposite direction as this kind of energy. It's someone who's like, Right? Because they're so kind of in the same direction. Right? Both moving towards in a way, right? At the base. If if this makes sense. So it's sort of like, you know, this is your external environment. And whatever this energy is, and it can be your own, right? Mother of cups. It could be just that you're stepping into your own self-nurturing space, right? And taking a very um, lead role, right? Very creative, a uh, creative direction with the project and consoling yourself maybe, right? That could be the energy that's really supporting you, right? Stepping into the wisdom and the power of your emotions. But I am feeling that it's another person, okay? However, nonetheless, it's sort of like you see this person coming off in your periphery. It's not like you're focused on that person. Like, Look, what happened to me today at school? I don't feel like it's really like that. I'm feeling like it's like, hey, you're on your path, right? You're encouraged to move down this path and you're doing it and you're focused, 
up ahead on strategizing. And out comes this mother of cops, right? Like just supporting you, right? Just saying, yes, I, I, I love what you're doing. It's that kind of energy. Very supportive, pushing out whatever this potential energy could be, just pushing it out and taking its place. Now, coming from the same direction, right? So the hermit in reverse beneath the five of wands. I'm sensing that perhaps you were in a period of, in the past, rumination. Two options, two options, Pisces. In a period of rumination, right, not taking action. This is a very passive card when it's upright. Look at it. Ruminating, ruminating on. Really getting into that very um, quiet, still space, right? Of thinking, what do I want to do? What's real to me, right? In a process of discovery of our inner truth. I'm feeling, though, that that period of time is done with. And you are now, you have a clarity. You have a clarity of path. Son of Pentacles, Son of Cups, upright. Awaiting the Ace of Pentacles to go upright. You're now focused. The Hermit is now looking up at the five of wands, like, okay, now let's look at our options, right? I know what I want to do. I know what's real to me intuitively, right? Now let's take action with it and let's really form a strategy on how to take action. Okay. Beautiful. Pisces, love this energy for you. You guys, I know I feel it. I've been feeling it for the months that I've been doing the readings. Um, you're on a mission. You're on a roll with something that's very real to you. Very real to you. <clears throat> um, all power to you as to everyone. Move forward on this very exciting journey. Um, I feel like I don't even need to say this to you, right? Um, because you are so tuned in and dialed in. So at peace and at one with your path and with your vision, right? Hold fast to that as it certainly seems you are and you will, All right? Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I will be back with a last moon, last quarter moon reading um, that will sort of assess the energies of the full moon as it's trailing down, trickling into the new moon of the later portion of this month, okay? So you'll be able to get a feel for the sort of energy as it's cascading through the month. Um, by way of the moon's energies. It's kind of a fun way to uh, get a feel for how things are transforming along the way. All right, so that will be later this week, um, specifically, most likely on the 18th, okay? Um, nonetheless, uh, I will be back with your March readings. It's already almost March, right? Time is flying, so um, that will be this week as well. All right, so stay tuned for that. As always, I highly recommend you guys to check out your ascendant, rising, or moon sign, as that can often shed a lot of light um, as to um, the the energies that comprise our being. Right, it goes so far beyond the sun sign um, that we're born into. So it's a lot of fun. Check it out. Um, if you don't know your ascendant rising or moon sign. I have a link in the bio below. You can click that, enter in your birth details. Just make sure, however, that your birth time is correct, even down to the very minute as a few minutes off can actually change your rising moon, uh, your rising ascendant or moon sign. All right. So play around with that. Um, and let's see. Um, I believe that's all. Thank you so much, Pisces. Enjoy Valentine's Day. Um, seems that you're so dialed in and so tuned into that space of that very deep space of of of, of inner love right of self-love that then it somewhat inverts right into that and is synonymous with that love of of humanity of planet of dimension and beyond okay thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you guys soon bye